Michael Francesi unique gangster. He was the only one able to leave the mafia and live openly. Moreover, he became a convert to the Christian and almost a preacher. Michael has no dignity of the priest, but she gives lectures and sermons calling to go to the light side. It is also necessary to consider that in the Mafia Michael was not a pawn magazine fortune in 1986, put him in 18th place in the list of the richest and most powerful gangsters. Michael Francesi was born and raised in New York City in a family closely associated with the Mafia. His father, the legendary John Sonny Francesi, the oldest one of the gangsters at the moment, the current underboss family of Colombo. In September 1969, Michael entered the pre-med classes at Hofstra University, the school is 40 miles from New York. A funny coincidence, his graduates include Francis Ford Coppola, directed The Godfather, James Kinn, who played Sonny Corleone. Michael Francesi himself would later become a film producer. In October 1979 19-year-old Michael Francesi joined the Italian-American League of Civil Rights created by Joe Colombo. He attended meetings, distributed leaflets, and stood by Joe Colombo when he was shot in July 1971. Immediately after this incident, Michael dropped courses at the university and became a partner of the family of Colombo. To cover their operations, Michael opened the auto shop in Brooklyn. He later became the owner of a firm motor show Mazda. In November 1973 Michael Francesi was first arrested for a serious offense, before he was arrested during the rally, the Italian-American League hijack Chevrolet Camaro. But the court acquitted him. In June 1975 Michael Francesi married a girl named Mary. In October of the same year he became a made man. It was included in Andy's team Soft Russo. There is no evidence that Michael had to roll the dice. He is not admitted. Maybe he never had to kill anyone. Until 1979, that is, the case of Donnie Brasco, is sometimes allowed. Scam with gasoline. In March 1983 the Michael Francesi turned entrepreneur Larry Iorizzo, who owned several gas stations on Long Island. Some time ago, Michael helped him to solve some problems with extortionists. Larry Iorizzo proposed a clever scheme, as you can heat the government enormous sums, using the hole in the act petrol tax. Around the same time, to partner Michael name Winnie turned some Russian request to help recover a debt of $70. From Winnie wanted only one thing, to go with them to the debtor and say, pay, or I'll break your legs with the appropriate intonation. Michael decided to see what this Russian. It turned out to be recent emigrants from the Soviet Union and Romania Michael Markowitz, David Bogatin, and Lev Persitz. They owned a company in the wholesale sales of petroleum products in Brooklyn. At the meeting, held at a Russian-owned gas station, Michael heard an interesting information. Group Markowitz is already used in practice, a scheme like the one proposed, Ionesco. But they had some problems. First, the Russians didn't have enough muscle power to secure and collect the required money to them. Secondly, they had no political contacts to obtain new licenses for the sale of gasoline. Family Colombo could provide both. As a result, they entered into an agreement by which the Italians were received by 75%, Russian 25%. The deal was agreed to by all the five families in New York to avoid conflicts because of this new tasty morsel. Other families also engaged in such scams. For example, family Genovese and Lucchese collaborated with Mara Balagula, the godfather of Brighton Beach. Family Gambino is also not left out, John Gotti personally received a share from operations with gasoline. In brief, the scheme consisted in the following. Gangsters created a shell company 
and sold wholesale gasoline to smaller distributors. They were honest merchants, not suspecting the deception. The gangsters included in the price of federal and local taxes but not actually pay anything to the state. When the state demanded taxes from small distributors, shell companies were liquidated. The result is that consumers pay the gasoline taxes not the state, and directly into the pockets of gangsters. Due to the high tax rates and huge turnover the scheme has brought over hundreds of millions of dollars. This amount was comparable with the income from drugs. Career Growth Every week Russian brought Michael Franz several million dollars in cash in paper bags. Part of Michael was shared with Larry Iorizzo and some other and pay bribes to the right people. The tax, which took his gangsters, ranged from 2 to 30 cents per gallon, and in the month of Ionesco and the Russians sold to 400 to 500 million gallons. But a large part, 70 to 80 percent, were taken Boss Carmine the Snake per Seco. One of the observers, in fairness, we note that he hates the Michael Franchese, argues that the entire function Michael was to take money from Russian and pass a peach, you have to be a manager. Some in the mob called Michael a personal ATM per Seco. But it is wrong to belittle the role of Michael, as do his detractors. Carmine Persico was a dangerous and paranoid boss. He gave Michael Franchese title capo regime and left on cash flow, but probably Michael had to constantly be alert. If he gave a reason, and Peach would eliminate him and put in his place someone else, for example, his son. The scheme lasted four and a half years. During this time Michael Franchese managed to feel respect for the Russian. They were smart and possessed a business acumen. After the Soviet Union they had no fear of us law and prisons. The Russian was constantly creating new projects and they went to franchise. Together they carried out a number of frauds with securities. Michael has invested $10 million in a joint purchase of the bank in Austria for money laundering. Michael Markowitz, David Bogatin, and Lev Persitz become the bosses of one of the factions at Brighton Beach. In 1988, Markowitz was shot dead in his Rolls Royce as I drove up to the house. It eliminated its the same on behalf of the family of Colombo. The fact that he was defiantly a luxurious lifestyle, and became an informant for the FBI, trying to get an indulgence. Lion Persica too, was assassinated, and since he is wheelchair-bound. David Bogatin fled to Austria, then to Belarus, but was issued in the U.S. and now serving a prison sentence. Producer from the Mafia Despite the whole scale of petrol scam, it was only part of the interests of Michael Franchise. His legitimate occupation was movie, in 1983. Michael went to Los Angeles and became a film producer. Michael Franchese was CEO owner of a sports agency. He later claimed that took a turn several players New York Yankees baseball team from the Premier League and forced them to participate in the fraud. Until now, this was possible only to the great Arnold Rothstein. In the mid-1980s, Michael Franchese held a arrow with John Gotti about the petrol cases. Michael Strecka lost. There are two detailed descriptions of this meeting, written as from the point of view of Gotti and Michael. The first is a book about Gotti Star Mafia, and the second in an autobiographical book by Michael Leaving the Mafia. Anyway, the famous were the words of Michael, who is John Gotti. Now this is one of the classic Mafia quotes. Al Sharpton Michael Franchese was associated with Reverend Al Sharpton, a man famous in the U.S. but has a mixed reputation. Al Sharpton a black preacher, influential politician, and a fighter for civil rights. In 2004, he was one of the nominees for the U.S. presidency from the Democratic Party. Critics call him a radical, a demagogue and a black racist, a kind of African-American Zhirinovsky. 
Al Sharpton maintained ties with several mafia, for example, capo of the family Genovese Danny Pagano and Michael Francesi. With the latter he was introduced Rifkin Brothers who owned the label Spring Records, producing music in the style of rhythm and blues. Michael's father, Sonny Francesi also was CEO owner of the label, which produced black music. According to Michael, in the early 1980s, Al Sharpton was already influential, but I needed the money and was ready to render services to his friends from the Mafia. Family Colombo was controlled by the Union of Private Security Guards, which was led by Daniel Cunningham, partner of the Mafia. In 1983, the Mafia decided to create a branch trade union in Atlantic City, where, after the legalization of gambling there are a lot of hotels and casinos. On behalf of the leadership, Michael Francesi met Nicky Scarfo, the boss of the family of Philadelphia, which is controlled by Atlantic City. He gave agreed, but warned that the management is very stubborn and was advised to hold a picket in front of every hotel. Michael called Al Sharpton and he said, for the right price I'll hook you up ten buses with the percent, evil niggers that will clap the doors of the hotels day and night. In 2002 the HBO program Real Sports revealed tasking the FBI in 1983, where Al Sharpton talks with a certain Victor Guerrero, a businessman from South America. Previously, Guerrero pretending to be a novice boxing promoter and former drug dealer, turned to Michael Francesi with a request to arrange a meeting with Don King, the great boxing promoter, whose subjects were Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. Al Sharpton was a friend of Don King, and Michael sent Guerrero to him. As it turned out, it was the FBI investigation of corruption in professional boxing, and Guerrero was an agent of the undercover. On the film shown by HBO, Victor Guerrero invites Al Sharpton to launder money and even to sell cocaine, and he nods his head and says, Good, good. Al Sharpton is suing HBO, Michael Francesi, and journalists worth a billion dollars. He said that he was frightened, and agreed with all he said Guerrero, waiting for when he leaves. In addition, HBO did not show the last segment of the film where Sharpton demands that Guerrero never addressed him with such things. Al Sharpton believes that franchise then framed him. Prince of the Mafia In the 1980s Michael Francesi led the life of a mafia prince, which were piles, literally, of money, cocaine, and beautiful women. He, apparently, was making a million a month. Michael Francesi was obviously the main earner in the family of Colombo. In 1986 the magazine Fortune has put the 35-year-old Michael on the 18th place in the list of 50 most wealthy and powerful mafia. He passed many old and experienced dons. He behaved not in the spirit of the old school, and almost in the style of John Gotti. Carmine Persico and some of the family Colombo hated him for it. Journalists nicknamed him the Yuppie Don. Yuppie is a term that became widespread in the 1980s the so-called new social group rich young professionals, leading a modern and energetic way of life. In a sense they are the antithesis of hippies. Once Michael Francesi gave an interview on TV, which challenged the FBI let them prove that it is related to organized crime. To anger the feds are stupid and Michael paid the price. A sharp turn. In January 1985, Michael Francesi filming in Florida met the 20-year-old actress and dancer Camille Garcia and fell in love with her. He immediately divorced his wife, and in July 1985 in Las Vegas married to Camille. In November they had a son, who was named Michelle. Marital happiness did not last long. In December 1985 Michael Francesi was arrested. He was accused of tax evasion, Francesi concealed from the IRS of dollar the 40 million, participation in a petrol scam, extortion, and other crimes. 
In March 1986 Franchise made a deal with the investigation and pleaded guilty. In prison, he turned to God. According to him, he did it under the influence of Camille Garcia, who was a convert Christian. In November, while he was in prison, Camilla was born their second child a daughter Amanda. Michael Franchese was released from prison in October 1989, and after a week was the rite of baptism. Undoubtedly, he was baptized at birth, like all Italians, but this time it was a symbolic, deliberate step. Michael announced that he was leaving family Colombo and break with the Mafia. In 1990 they with Camilla was born the third child, a son, Michael J.R. But the new way of the Michael Franchese was rough. He's been caught in small financial scam, and in November 1991 he was sent to prison for violating parole. While he was in prison, released his autobiography Leaving the Mafia. New Life in December 1994 Michael released from prison and finally decides to start a new life. He founded the charitable foundation Breaking Out Foundation, Fond Breakthrough, the purpose of which was to warn young people from a life of crime and to help people suffering from gambling addiction. Michael Franchese began to give lectures in different cities of the United States, usually in church meetings and conferences as well as in schools and colleges. He often appears on radio and television and published three books. For a time he worked as a coach of children's baseball teams in California. The question is, why does Michael feel? Why he can openly live to meet the father, to give interviews and not to be afraid of an unexpected attack? It is known that the mafia alive don't go away, if away it's in the witness protection program. Michael himself answers evasively and call your situation unique. The theory that the gangsters had viscuffed we, said, oh, he's now a Christian and forgave him, cannot be considered. It is also unlikely that Michael would spare the life of his father. Yes, Sonny, Franchese man very dear, but the crime Michael is so great that it is not enough. On the other hand, although Michael Franchese and began to cooperate with the government, but were not in court and not testified against his former colleagues. There are only two exceptions. In 1987, Michael testified against two CO owners of a sports agency, but they were not Italians and the Mafia members. In 1996 he appeared before the U.S. Senate Committee investigating the activity of the Russian Mafia, but gave details only about its affairs or those who have already died. They say that Michael Franchese made some kind of deal with Carmine Persico when I left the mob. There are even rumors that he hid the tens of millions, and now every year pays Persico to him and his family has not been touched. Most likely, the reality was more banal. Michael was lucky, and he slipped the most dangerous period the first years after his desertion. In the early 1990s, Family Colombo was occupied by the Third Colombo War. But then was not up to Michael, especially because he didn't give up any nerd. Conclusion Many see Michael Franchese hero and role model. On the other hand, there are those, especially associated with the Mafia, who refer to it, to put it mildly, not positive. They think he's a hypocrite who has deceived and the Mafia, and the Feds, came out unscathed and speculates on own behalf and past. About Michael saying that he accidentally found a gold mine petrol scam, and bought himself honor in the Mafia, but actually was a whiner and a weakling, unlike his father. Carmine Persico had taken all the money, when Michael decided to leave the Mafia, and now he has to earn a living from books and lectures. In my opinion, much better than a bad Christian than a good gangster. Michael France is doing useful work. And he, apparently, happy. 
He lives in California life is middle class with his beloved wife and three children. I would like to finish the story on this blissful note, but I have to add, in January 2010, Michael Francesi was arrested, on charges of discharge of unsecured check, as soon as he arrived in Knoxville, Tennessee, where he was to speak at a church conference, and spent the night in jail. However, it was a misunderstanding, Michael had a conflict with his former manager about a relatively small amount of money, $5.400, and the latter went to the police. Michael paid the money to the manager, and the court dropped the charges. Interesting Facts Michael Francesi once participated in the American version of the game show 100 to 1. The presenter asked him a question, what American coins are no notches on the edges? Michael answered incorrectly, and said, I only dealt with paper money. In one of the books Michael is given a funny episode, on behalf of my capo Andy Soft Russo Michael bought a few dead chickens at the butcher shop Peter Castellano the cousin of Big Paul Castellano. The chickens turned out to be a bug larvae, but Castellano refused to take them back. The dispute gave up, and a few chickens held a arrow between the leadership of the family Gambino and Colombo.